Well, we didn't, um, didn't really move on. Uh, it would have been better if Mr. Faber was recalled or he at least got the majority of the votes. You know, that would have been uh, definitive. But to come, not even to, to have 47% of the people uh, vote to keep you and 54% of the delegates answer the question because the question on the ballot was, do you want the Honorable Patrick Farber to remain as leader of the UDP? And if 54% per, of the people, of the delegates said no, that is problematic. Um, so we, we haven't progressed, we haven't moved forward. Uh, the idea that, oh, well, you only needed one third and we needed two thirds, um, the numbers still don't lie. Uh, so certainly it would have been better for all of us had it gone convincing uh, one way or the other. Uh, but, you know, the argument is being made, and I join with that argument that 54% is significant. You guys have had somewhat of a contentious relationship. You don't really see eye to eye for a great many things. How do you plan on working together to bring the UDP forward as a viable option as the opposition party? It is very difficult to do that when the party leader is on TV, on Great Belize Station, Channel 5, saying publicly that the 26 uh, standard bearers that lost are, are nobodies. Uh, it is very difficult to do that when he is saying that, you know, He's criticizing me for being unstable and erratic and all over the place. For the last eight months, we have not had any MPC. And that is one of the reasons he was removed as leader of the opposition, because he was behaving in an autocratic, dictatorial fashion. And we couldn't go to the wider party because he said, oh, this one doesn't have standing, that one isn't properly constituted. So he suspended the constitution in essence. He suspended the activities of the highest authority in the UDP. 